Good guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and in today's episode, this is my palate cleansing episode. Just getting the taste of the old world talk out of my system, because it's depressing as hell. Uh, and I'm going to talk about Endred Ha, but I'm also going to talk about some, like, list building stuff, basically. You know, the ideas phase of things. But anyway, uh, so Endred Ha, the uh, world eater loyalist has a beefy looking model uh, and I like it I like it quite a lot there are things that I don't like that is going to happen on every model and uh, but nothing that says I don't want the model I do find things strange like having the rivets being these like squared off or slightly octagonal shapes and yet they don't actually bond any armor together because you see the little crosshatch pattern that's in the in the shoulder pads well that crosshatch pattern should have holes in it if the rivets are actually bonding anything together but i digress it doesn't really mean much it's just a curiosity of the sculpt uh, i always think it's a little strange that his legs have well these boots have like a world eaters type icon underneath the sole but it's just a flat sole that would be very very slippery one would imagine but, you know, that's the nitpicks. That's the nitpicks out of it. Um, he looks good. It's a cool pose. It's something different to just one foot up on rock, uh, on tactical rock, which is lovely. The parts also, the backpack with the World Eaters icon on top, that will become, I think, a sought-after conversion part for World Eaters players. And don't really care for the uh, pistol. It looks like a Votan weapon partly due to the color scheme, partly due to the numerous print lines you can see running down the sides of it. Little 3D printing will never take over from Games Workshop. Um, yeah, no, I think it's just a nice looking model. It's great to see Mark V, it's well proportioned. Uh, it doesn't have anything that's like a crazy over the top unnecessary detail. Um, you know, where they've just added stuff and then added stuff and then added stuff and you sit there going, this model is so busy and disorganized, I don't even know what I'm looking at anymore. Doesn't suffer from any of that. Uh, so if future characters basically head down the route of this, I will be one pretty happy chappy. And yeah, that's it really on Endred Ha. Uh, apart from the fact that we'll probably see a ton of Black Shields armies pop up out of nowhere, which... You know, I, I used to get annoyed by it, and now I just chuckle. Um, you know, it seems to be a thing within player communities in general that whenever a new um, faction or a new flavor of the month pops out, people always gravitate towards it. Not because they've, you know, necessarily held any strong convictions one way or the other for a certain faction. It's just, you know, it happens every time. I uh, play Thousand Suns from 1993 up till a couple of years ago um, and I stopped playing Thousand Suns for a few reasons but in that time I would see so many people just a Thousand Suns would get a release for like 40k or 30k and there would be a bandwagon a whole bunch of people who'd never played them before would jump in and then usually jump straight back out because they they encountered the psychic phase and realized what a, a nightmare it was <laughs> um, and it used to annoy me and be like hey oh, people buying up all the stock and none of them even play thousands of times. like a grumpy old man now i just chuckle about it I'm like yeah it's gonna happen every every release every edition it'll be like you know if they bought out a squad of i don't know something really obscure let's say they bought out a plastic salamanders um pyroclasts box i guarantee you there'd be an influx of new salamanders players tomorrow it's just the way they go hey uh so me and things I've been doing. So I am working on a word bearers project, a iron warriors project, an iron hands project, a blood angels project, and a uh, emperor's children project simultaneously because I'm a madman. And you might ask why. So in part, some of these projects, oh, and a Raven Guard project as well, um, which is probably the first point to start. Some of these projects, uh, such as the Raven Guard and the Eye Warriors, were started at the very tail end of Heresy 1.0. 
And then Heresy 2.0 struck and completely changed the way that those factions, as I was implementing them, were going to play, uh, particularly the Raven Guard one. I had gone for a very more day than heavy force in in that army. You know, I'd done an Alvarex Morn conversion and I'd done a Kytus Nest conversion, and it was a nice looking force. Uh, I was really proud of the direction that army was heading and with the themes that I was going for in it. Um, going for like the recon, ride of war, and such. Uh, uh, just basically being all infantry and just a few aircraft. No dreadnoughts, no. Um, Terminators, anything like that. But with the advent of 2.0, it completely changed how all of that worked. Fire Raptors just kind of sucked now. Um, unless you're like playing just absolute bulk numbers of flyers. And if I was playing them all day, then well, the weapons I'd chosen, mostly combi plasmas and combi melters, didn't have anywhere near the utility in 2.0 they had in 1. It was just a better bet to go for a Nemesis Bolters or to go for... Um, to go for Volkites because you were just going to get better bang for your buck on the miniatures. Otherwise, you're paying just excessive amounts of points for an underperforming army on the tabletop. And, you know, this comes up all the time because I'll say to people, like, oh, it's not about how well the army performs on the tabletop. It is about what you want to represent with the army. But at the same time, you don't want to just be shooting yourself in the foot because that's going to lead to unenjoyable games for you. You know, it's got to be enjoyable for both parties. And you can't just be a charity out there who's just, here, have an easy time of it, win all your games. I will just sit here and be the loser for you. It's not the most enjoyable um, process. Uh, but the problem with this army was it would now become like spending all these points on crappy combi plasmas on these more day than that I've already, you know, built and converted and done all this work on. Uh, and then I've got all these recon squads with them. It's like, well, if I if I take advantage of that and I build as many recon squads as I was going to where they were just mediocre in 1.0, now they're god tier. Like Raven Guard running like three, four, five squads of recon marines in a recon right of war in 2.0 or um, in a um, decapitation strike where it's like preferred enemy independent characters on everything, that's just terrifying because you just snipe out all the sergeants and special weapons and heavy weapons out of every unit um snipe out every thunder hammer before they even get close to you because you can shoot 72 inches and thanks to infiltrate and such you can get real mastery of the battlefield with your deployment so that you get advantageous positions that you are functionally untouchable uh and it is the one of the best ways to play the raven guard in 2.0 um it's not that they do it particularly better job of it than anyone else but he's just a strong build for anyone so that raven guard force became something i just didn't want to keep going with um the iron warriors army uh, is a different kettle of fish again because my iron warriors force um uh, that was designed around i was going for a shrapnel bolt gun theme for 1.0 and i can still do it with 2.0 um, like all the rapier um, batteries and such, they're still pretty good with the quad like shrapnel um, bolt weapons and that. But what I was looking at in 1.0 was I wanted my t anti tank and stuff to be like Dark Fire Castellax. And Dark Fire Castellax with a Pravian don't perform anywhere near the same in 2.0. Um, and the thing was, like, I was trying to make a balanced army where it wasn't overpowered in any one aspect, but it was like I could. I could have my fun meme units and sort of compensate for it with other units. I don't have that luxury in 2.0. So it's something that I have to, you know, revisit and tweak because it's like I can't take down a Contempt of Dreadnought with that force uh, unless I invest heavily into other aspects. So like I have a Dominator Cohort Squad, for example, 10 of those, um, running with the eight Thunder Hammers and two with Chain Fist and Multi Melter because it's just such a awesome combo if you can take that unit in your force it's it's yeah pretty good um and i had golg because i was going to be running a mixture of units where golg fitted really really well um as a 1.0 force so it's gonna be a really early heresy force before his death like right at the start is fun era no like iron circle or anything like that. that's why it had dominators in there 
And, um, you know, so that's what I was thinking with the Eye Warriors. They went on the back burner. And then I have the Blood Angels Force. So the Blood Angels Force is a very higher end paint army that I decided to do for it, higher end scheme. And the miniatures that I've got for it are spectacular, if I do say so myself. The problem is though, it takes me a very, very long time to paint them. And I normally paint armies in days, okay? This is an army project that's taking months because it's a slow burn I'll get out there, I'll do like one Marine in a day type thing, which for me is incredibly slow, uh, almost frustrating level of work. And you might be looking at this video now and going, geez, how many projects you've got on the go that are just going nowhere? Like, are you becoming that thing you always want about, like person who can't commit and finish projects? Well, no, 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 I'm finishing the projects off. I just got to change the scope of them as I go. Because part of uh, writing videos, uh, writing videos, making content, making videos, is that I, I have a whole bunch of theories on how the game plays. I, I can read the rules, I can interpret the rules, and I can say, all right, you do this, this, and this, and this is how it's performed. Tabletop writers did a bad job because of X, Y, and Z. But I like to build the armies and play it because it's not just good enough to interpret the written word of the game, written data, and just make a conclusion. It is better to say, here's what I think is going to happen. Let's test that out. Does that actually happen? And there have been times where I've been caught off guard and had to eat my words and go, well, no, that isn't actually what happened. But the majority of the time, it plays out exactly how I think. But it's still good to go through that process anyway of trial and error and using those armies. And it also allows me to, you know, build for them. When I started 2.0, I had that Raven Guard force, you know, built, but mostly unpainted. I painted the first sort of three units or so, four units and a couple of characters. And that Raven Guard Force is what I did a lot of the early playtesting with. And because of that, I very quickly worked out how awful Raven Guard were this edition. And I was able to change up the list because I had miniatures floating around. So I thought, let's sub in some Terminators. All right, how do they perform? Oh, Legacies have dropped. Let's try Raven Guard Deliverers. How do they perform? And so a lot of the content that came later on down the line was basically me going back and reevaluating stuff after having tested it. So when the game dropped, I had an initial um, getting started in Heresy 2.0 series. Um, and then I changed direction. It was gonna be like this three, four part series where it's like, okay, we're gonna look at the Legion rules, how you build the arm with models. Okay, what conversion 3D prints can we use? And things happened around that to change that. Uh, partly I was playtesting more and going, okay, well, these are things I got wrong. Here's where I misunderstood the rules, where I, I interpreted them incorrectly. You know, I got things like battle hardened wrong early on um, and the application of that because I'm an idiot. It's fine. I'll wear it. Um, that happened, but then, you know, more units started getting added to the game. There were some FAQs that came out, and of course, blatant favoritism began to occur for two certain factions in the game, uh, who started just getting more and more stuff, and it, it just became a, a mess, a nightmare overnight. And then GW started getting very litigious with 3D printmakers, people who were, you know, not even selling their prints. The prints were free, but... You know, they might have a Patreon or something which is tangentially related to the prints and they were getting struck down. So it was like, well, you know, I, I don't want to showcase other 3D printers now, not because I don't think their work deserves the showcasing. I certainly think it does. But it's almost like an open secret of, well, if I share this, it could actually end their 3D printing, not assist them, you know? So it dramatically scaled it back. And then of course with like proxying and stuff like that and new sculpts that didn't marry up with certain other parts because it used to be that you know the way marines were you could change out torsos really easily now it's like the torso the legs is molded as one piece different styles of joints on the arms and backpacks um, no um spare arms being provided in kits and such, it became a really difficult to go like, well, these are the spare parts, you can just quickly swap onto these models. So it changed like my entire outlook in, in my process. 
Uh, the Werberry's army is still on the go. That one's pretty much there. It's pretty much a done army. Um, I just haven't pro like previewed that, promoted it yet. It, it's an entirely 3D printed force, that you, except for a couple of characters. And if you look at that force, you would not pick it as a 3D printed force. That's specifically why I built that project. Um, and it's an Ashen Circle themed force, unlike the sort of Gal Vorbach most Werberry's players do. And you're probably starting to sense a bit of a, a pattern here. I want, one would hope through the ramblings of this video that I like to do different forces to what others are doing. I know whether it's because I'm a special snowflake who needs to be unique in his approach, but I like to do different things uh, and focus on different aspects of the Legion. So for with those Iron Warriors, it was a shrapnel bolter force. Now shrapnel bolters are everywhere and it's, and it's not an interesting army take necessarily uh the raven guard it was a reconnaissance force for heresy 1.0 well recon forces are really strong in 2.0 so it's like eh, no good um i did a fury of the ancients in 1.0 again fury of the ancients and, and brethren of iron two uh forces i really liked playing in 1.0 i did a brethren of iron with a thousand sons which was really interesting force it doesn't work in 2.0 um the, the word bearers being an ashen circle army again it's taking like that one aspect and going all right let's build something around this i did nemesis chapter 22nd nemesis for ultramarines in heresy one where it was like an all destroyer force based on um like the arcology battles and then a few months later games workshop went and released uh legacies uh exemplary battles sorry of that very thing so they watched the video and said well yeah this is cool let's expand on it Cool, whatever, I'm glad you watched my videos. But why only that one? There are plenty of other videos that give you ideas of things you can fix. Please listen to those, Games Workshop. Um, and so that brings me to uh, the Iron Hands and the Empress Children projects. So, Iron Hands one's pretty simple. I wanted to do a real grav-heavy force because grav is strong this edition, but it's really strong against dreadnoughts and vehicles. Outside of that, it's quite a weak weapon this edition. Uh, you don't have anything like the Graviton uh, Leviathans of 1.0. It doesn't exist in 2.0. Uh, Grav Aquators, another thing, right? So heading down that route, and I like uh, 3D designed and printed Graviton Shredders for all of my tactical support squad, uh, of which there's just one in the army, but made up these cool like three-barrel uh, Graviton Shredder type weapons, you know, which is, which is neat. I was happy with them. Uh... And then, yeah, that project sitting off to the side, being worked on. Um, you would have seen I did an Ortec Moor uh, conversion where I went all out, went ham, did this Ortec Moor conversion so that I I can I can go down the Clan Morrigal uh, and shatter the Legion's route because there are some interactions there that I thought would be really cool. Hence why I've gone for this Graviton Morrigal advanced force. Um, which I will have more locks and some of the nastier toysing. Like, it will be a hard, hard list. Um, then we've got, uh, obviously, I've still got my cell names, but the Emperor's Children. Okay, so the Emperor's Children, um, and hopefully you guys are getting a bit of an understanding of how my head actually works with this game and what actually interests me. And it's not the ragging on Games Workshop part of things. I rang on Games Workshop because I feel like they get in the way. They're an impediment to me being able to make these lists at times. And I got to the Emperor's Children and I hit a huge roadblock because I wanted to do a corrupted Emperor's Children army where, you know, they're eight-tenths of the way along being Chaos Space Marines. They're, they're borderline. They're pretty late in the heresy you know, the leather gimp suits are really starting to come out in force. Noise Marines is just an everyday occurrence for them. Um, and we're moving away from the pretty Emperor's Children. Where it's like, okay, we're no longer this rich, deep purple and gold. I want to move to something that is more like creams and pinks and just subtle purples in there for just some shading effects, just to break it up and um, they described in the Fulgrim novel from way, way back at the very, very start, like the fourth book or something out for the Horus Heresy, how they just dabbed like 
different colored paints onto their armor and it was just a riot of colors that blend into this sort of pearlescent mosaic collage on their armor and so i wanted to go down the route of that um there's also this interesting uh 40k empress children the the um flawless co- uh flawless uh host and i want to take those and the traditional sort of empress children's like pinks and blacks and combine them together on these arms so it's like i've gone with like black arms black backpacks black helmets with like a lighter pink cream sort of colored um torso and as well as doing this i want to move away from all the bright golds and start putting more silvers in there because it contrasts better with the blacks um, than the just solid golds everywhere did so mixing these sort of things together I started working on this force, um, you know, prepped a few models, did some tests, and then list building came and it hit me like a ton of bricks because the Emperor's Children Corrupted rules are so unfathomably badly written for the game. This is not like hyperbole, like, oh, they're just, they're bad rules, you know, the writers are just bad at their job. No, no, no. I mean, it's exactly that. They are so fundamentally badly written you, they're just unplayable because any bonuses you would get from having these rules get rid of so much war gear so many special rules so many special units that you're basically playing emperor's children uh, without any of the stuff that makes them the emperor's children and at the same time uh, your stuff is weaker because the stupefy ability is just so bad. It's one of the worst things in the game. Essentially, you're getting a 6-up feel no pain on your unit, but in exchange for that, you lose access to Empress Children characters, Empress Children armory. Um, you're getting a worse version of what was in their old armory, minus a couple of um, like Phoenix weapons. And your unit's essentially pinned if they choose to utilize this six up feel no pain you essentially become pinned um that's how it functions in all but name and it's like why would anyone want this this is just unbelievably awful on every level um these rules are just they are unplayable um so you know i i i i tried i really tried to make an emperor's children force work from the corrupted rules and it was like your rights of war both needed fulgrim uh your war traits was restricted you're just and and none of the bonuses were particularly crash hot and it's like i don't want to take demon fulgrim to games you know he's a primarch special character who shouldn't be involved in regular games on the tabletop especially um, given the, the breakdown of the Legion and how rarely different elements were operating together in this Legion towards the end of the heresy where I'm setting this army, why would Demon Fulgrim be present all the time? And, of course, to actually get any of the rights of war with these guys, you need to take Demon Fulgrim, and all of the regular rights of war for Legion of States are locked away. You can't use any of them. You can't use, like... Sky Hunter Phalanx, you know, you can't use um, Recon Force, you can't even use Fury of the Ancients, because all those are Legion's Astartes, your Legion is Hereticus, so the Corrupted Force does not work. Uh, so then, I made the wise decision, which was to do exactly what I said when I did my review of that book, uh, which was run Third Company Elite, because Third Company Elite simulates a Noise Marine Force really, really well, because it uh, unlocks noise weapons for the whole army, makes cacophony troops. So that's the route I went down. So I put cacophony into the force, which I really wanted, but I didn't want to use cacophony miniatures. Um, It's not that they look bad, right? These are gorgeous models, I think, personally, um, the cacophony. Uh, What I wanted to do was take 40k parts, specifically um, 40k Chaos Space Marines, because I wanted that corrupted look. And so I settled on Noise Marine weapons from 40K, where it's like, they're starting to get a little bit more down the line because it gives me things like it's got the leather, the black leather gimp gloves on there and the little speakers in the shoulder pads. And I thought they would look good on the new Mark III bodies. And um, spoilers, they actually look very good on the new Mark III bodies. 
It also gave me a few uh, custom parts. So the backpack, for example, here, the, the classic Noise Marine backpack, I had a 3D STL of this, um, which is actually very, very close to this. And I've printed out for use on uh, like my squad sergeants. But I combined that backpack there uh, with this Power Armored Praetor because I decided pretty early on I don't think I want any Terminators in the Force. Terminators are a bit cliched in this edition. And apart from um, apart from the Cacophony, I'm avoiding Emperor's Children units because I think in 2.0, well, one, Palatine Blades uh, strike me less as a corrupted elite Emperor's Children force that's like noise marines and more like the honorable exemplars of what it should have been to be an emperor's children marine you know like knights in space so i wanted to avoid those and phoenix terminators and palatine blaze they're just points traps you know emperor's children as a whole i think suffers from you want to take all the cool toys of the legion but you're overpaying for something that can be simulated with another unit for cheaper financially whatever so i took the emperor's children legion praetor and I didn't take the spear. I'm not a big fan of that spear, as many of you would know, but I am a fan of the model as a whole. Uh, so I took him and I put that Noise Marine backpack here, um, which they couldn't even be stuffed making more than one photo of, uh, this kit. That backpack onto that particular Praetor. Uh, kept the shoulder pads, kept that head, but changed the right arm into, uh, I have the Slangors, and they have a spare crab claw for like Slanesh in there. So I put the claw onto this miniature because now I can say pretty much I cover in my bases here. It can be multiple weapons. In my case, he'll count as having a lightning claw and that giant crab claw just represents that. And it's showing that decline, that fall towards Slanesh where it's like he now has a pincher instead of a regular arm and he's got that mutated voxy face. So okay, I think I'm onto something here. I also converted up a Issa Terrorist for the Force. Um, the Issa Terrorist, I've utilized um, some Age of Sigma bits, but I also used this Gimp suit head. Um, it just looks great on that Issa Terrorist body. It actually blends together really, really nicely. Uh, the head with the speaker coming out the mouth here, I originally wanted to use that as my Armistos or Master of Signals head because I thought, hey, there's your Nuncio Vox, it's in his mouth. But the way this head is sculpted, the neck coming out the back of his head doesn't look doesn't look right with the cables and such. Uh, I tried it on a few different models, and it looks more like a gene stealer's head as opposed to a marine's head that's just been heavily augmented. So I've had to put that head aside, and I haven't utilized it on any model yet. The uh, crested um, plumed helmet here I haven't used yet either I've just put that off to the side I printed a bunch of heads for my uh, noise marines they're all bareheaded and they've all like been surgically augmented and modified and you know found, found some nice heads for that um, and the squad are holding um, these sonic blasters as their cacophony noise weapons I've got some Blast Masters. I used one on the Armistos because I can count something that size as a Laz Cannon or whatever if I put it on Armistos. And that was a great way of converting him. I used Malagos the Twisted's body for the Armistos slash Master of Signals. Now, in the average game, I would take the Master of Signals in games where we use the mournful rules the master signals loses that nuncio uh loses that um not the nuncio vox the uh, i'm forgetting things now loses the plus one ballistic skill when he loses the plus one ballistic skill then i take the army stores because i want to have the boosted ballistic skill in the cacophony to make them really shine um and then if i'm playing a regular game where it's not mournful event rules then i get to use that plus on Blizzy skill, and I get to give that free leadership 10 to another unit in the army. So I think that's a really good blending of attributes of the army right there. Um, and then I'm looking at like the command squad. So the command squad, I'm thinking I want to use Empress Children Palatine Blades bodies. Not any of the arms, just the bodies in the command squad. Uh, this is a command squad on foot, not on jump packs. 
uh, at this stage anyway. And I think that's because I want to rearm them probably with combat shields and maybe power mauls and lightning cores. Because then I can maybe follow in the um, follow in the footsteps of the commander and say like, you know, put some crab claws on there, essentially like demonet arms. And I think that would look quite good. I think, I, I again, I've not fully built out the list, but it's something I can play with and work out like what does and doesn't work. But I think that'll be a good look. As for their weapons, I'm gonna have all these leftover charitable weapons. That's perfect because I wanna make a squad of inductii. So I'll have a Mark VI Inductii squad, and I'll get all of these weapons over onto those. I've also got the regular Tactical Marine squad, um, you know, 10 dudes with bolt guns, and so I'll have some Inductii, some regular Tacticals in there, I'll have the Cacophony in there, and then I'm going to add some Demons of the Ruin Storm in there. Uh, Slaneshi themed Demons of the Ruin Storm. So overall, it's going to be a pretty fun force uh, but we're still pretty early days yet um, the models are looking nice I think uh, but I don't want to show them off yet because I'm hoping um, so I've won every sort of award I've ever wanted to win at this point when I need to turn it on and churn out really nice looking miniatures I can do it you know I'm not greatest painter in the world or anything like that but I'm pleased enough in my skills that I've achieved the goals I've wanted to achieve. So now when I rock up to events, I, I don't care if I win absolutely nothing. I'm not actively trying to win anything. I'm not painting miniatures to do that, ever. Um, everything I paint and build and convert now is entirely for one person, me. Uh, and it's great. I'm so at peace in my hobby because of that. I'm in a happy place. With this army, there is one note to make to that, though, that's different. I want this army to rock up, and I just want people to... <laughs> this is the hobby goal here. I want them to just come over and say, oh, that's fucking cool. <laughs> um, and not for an ego thing. I just... I want to bring joy. I want people to have that... Where they come away going, man, I want to, like, recreate that. Or, you know, I think that's a really cool idea what you've done there. So that's the goal that I want out of this time. I don't want awards or anything like that, but I want to not show it. I just want to, one event, they just come out and people just go, holy moly, what have you created here? That's the goal I have in mind for it. Um, and you know, not everyone's going to share that goal. That's fine. That's totally cool. I'm, again, at peace with that. Uh, but that's the hope, the desire, that when I pull this out, people go, that scheme is just outrageous. Um, and yet, you know, I can see exactly what you're meaning with this force, but they work. They work in this setting. That's the that's the goal. Doesn't mean I'm going to achieve it, but that's the goal I want out of my hobby. Um, and yeah, you know, from time to time, I'll dump on Games Workshop as well because they deserve it. Because... Uh, they're not caring about what's best for the hobby. They just care about that bottom line. Um, even if some people there do really care about the hobby, unfortunately, they're not steering the ship. And it does get in the way of me achieving that desire because it's like, if I can't make a physically playable force out of some lists like that Empress Children, Lee Jones, Hereticus, then you've, you've deprived me of some of the enjoyment I could have got from that force. And that's depressing as hell to me. Um... But yeah, I'm very curious though, in the comments below, if um, what are your hobby goals? You know, What are you looking at when you build these armies? Um, is this how you would have thought that I go about my um, army designs or how I'm combining bits together if that really weird to you? And also, what about you? Have you made the Emperor's Children and Legionis Hereticus work, anyone? Um, and if you have, how did you do it without just cheesing it? Like, oh, well, if you take Contempted Dreadnoughts, they're good regardless type of thing. Um, I'd be very curious to see. But yeah, um, that's it for me. I am Macca with the Outer Circle. Thank you all for watching this probably boring episode. But hey, this is this is the palette glints. These are the things that bring me great enjoyment that I would rather do. So when you get these episodes, please, I hope you enjoy them as much as I do. See you on the next video.